Greeting from Hong Kong. I'm Ming Zhen Verno. I'm an art advisor based in Hong Kong, and I'm specializing Western art for Chinese market. In the next five minutes, we are going to take a journey through five art objects that span almost four centuries. We start in Germany in 1514. What we are looking at is an engraving by probably the most famous German artist in 16th century. His name is Dua. The title of the engraving is called Saint Jerome in his study. Here, we see Saint Jerome sit at his desk writing. In the front, there's a lion, which is iconography of Saint Jerome. Next to the lion is a sleeping dog, symbolizes royalty. I love this image because it echoes my daily life. I also have a loyal dog. Her name is Sesame. And every morning when I'm sitting at my desk, writing on my computer, she would sit next to me by the desk, just like this one. It is true, dog is the human's best friend. We are now moving to early 17th century Florence, Italy. What we are looking at now is a Pietradura cabinet. Pietradura means hard stones in Italian. It's a technique using fitted and polished semi-precious stones to make uh, images. This piece depicts a mythology stories. The centerpiece shows Orpheus, who is a legendary poet using his music to attract animals. That's why he is surrounded by 18 animals. A few seemed the Pietradura furniture was very popular. In 1588, the Grand Duke Medici established a workshop of Pietradura. If you're ever in Florence, you should visit the workshop. Now it's a museum. If Pietradura is my favorite material for Italian furniture, when it comes to Chinese furniture, it has to be the lacquer. Equally labor intensive to make, a beautiful lacquer surface requires hundreds of layers. Each layer has to be applied after the previous layer was dried properly. Indeed, it's a very long, slow process. However, the end result of such patience is an incredible surface that not only delights your eyes, but also gives a sensual feeling if you touch it. That is why I'm surrounded myself with such furniture. The lacquer screen behind me is one of the many that I have collected over the years. By mid 18th century, Chinese export art reached its peak in terms of quality. This piece, I believe, is from this period. Overall, the style is European. It, it consists three parts, the base, the bureau, and the cabinet. They are easily to be separated for the convenience of shipping and packing. Because these furniture took long boat journey from Canton to Europe. If you ever encounter such cabinet, please make sure you look for a secret compartment somewhere. They often contain the previous owner's secret letters. We are staying in Asia for now, but fast forward 100 years later in 1845. This is a sketch by the English painter, George Chinnery. George Chinnery was born in 1774 and died in 1852. He spent most of his life in India and Southeast Asia. This sketch depicts a young Chinese girl. Judging from her outfit, she is a Tanka boat woman. We know that Chinnery hired two Tanka boat women as his models. Their names are Aloy and Aso, and I guess this sketch could be one of them. 
We also know Chenery lived his last 27 years in Macau. From the shorthand on the upper right corner says, March 31st, 1845. Most likely this was made in Macau. If you are a fan of Chenery, you must visit Hong Kong and I will guarantee you a private visit to the HSBC headquarters to see the great works of Chenery. We are coming back to Europe now, landing at the island of Corsica in 1869. What we are looking at is an oil painting by Edward Lear. The title is The Forest of Bavella. Between April 8th to June 6th, 1868, Edward Lear was traveling in Corsica. Over two months of his travel, he made 350 drawings. Afterward, there were three oil paintings of Bavera Forest. I'm showing you also here a book called Edward Lear in Corsica. It's his journal detailed his trips in Corsica over the two months. I have this book because I was planning to follow his steps, walking through the trails in Corsica, looking for the viewers that he painted 150 years ago. However, the pandemic put my plan on hold. So I can't tell you how delighted I am when I discovered this painting at the Masterpiece Fair. This is exactly the wonder of Masterpiece Fair. It is full of surprise and delights. Now we are ending our journey. I hope this pandemic will be over soon. And by next year, we will be able to fly to London to attend the Masterpiece Fair in person. See you next time.